Section 13, question 1. An open cuboid measures internally x by 2 x by h units and has an inner surface area of 12 square units. Show that the volume of the cuboid is given by v equals 2 thirds x bracket 6 minus x squared. We can see that the volume of the cuboid is just going to be length times breadth times height. So that's 2x squared h. Now if we look at the result here, it contains x's but does not contain h. So the first thing we're looking to do is see if we can come up with an expression for h in terms of x. That's where we use the clue in the question. The clue in the question is that the inner surface area of the cuboid is 12 square units. Now what I can do is come up with an equation for the inner surface area then. So if I think about this surface here, I can see that that has got an area of 2xh. Now, this side here is identical in area, so that's also got an area of 2xh. That's going to be xh, and the back will be xh again. And then if I think about the base, the bottom of the thing, well that's 2x by x, so that's 2x squared. And that is all equal to 12. I'm going to just collect this all together then. 2xh plus 2xh plus xh plus xh is going to give me 6xh. So 6xh plus 2x squared is equal to 12. Now what I'm looking to do now is to come up with something for h in terms of x, which means I'm going to change the subject of the formula here to h. So 6xh is equal to 12 minus 2x squared, and h is equal to 12 minus 2x squared, all over 6x. Now that's looking adequate. I'm just going to split it up and simplify a wee bit, so it's going to be 12 over 6x minus 2x squared over x so 12 over 6x is 2 over x x squared over get x cancels, so that will be minus 2x or rather that should be 6x, so 2 over 6 gives me one third to x squared over x is x, so the height can now be given as 2 over x minus one third x. I'm now going to return to my formula here for the volume, so that's 2x squared h. So the volume now is 2x squared, and I'm going to replace h with 2 over x minus one third x. Here's the answer that I'm looking to get to. So I'm going to just keep an eye on that. Expand this out. So 2x squared times 2 over x will give me 4x squared over x, which is just 4x. 2x squared times 1 third x, so that's going to be 2 thirds x cubed. Now the question is now looking for me to take out a common factor at 2 thirds. So 2 thirds x rather, so I'm going to take that out. 2 thirds x times what gives me 4? Well, 2 thirds times 6 would be 12 thirds, so that's 4. So that would be 6. 2 thirds x times 6 is 12 thirds x, which is 4x. 2 thirds x or 2 thirds x cubed gives me minus x squared, and that's part A. Part B says find the exact value of x for which this volume is a maximum. That's now thinking about optimization and maximum. I'm thinking about stationary points and um, proving the stationary point is maximum either by double derivative or nature table. And I'll go on to that later. So, first of all, I'm going to prepare to differentiate by multiplying out the brackets. So, 2 thirds x times 6 is going to give me 4x. 2 thirds x times x squared will give me 2 thirds x cubed. 
I'm now going to differentiate. So 4x becomes 4. Bring the power down here, multiply 2 thirds times 3. Well, that counts, cancels out the dividing times 3, so it's just 2x squared. And I'm making that equal to 0. So, get minus 2x squared is equal to minus 4. Cancel the negatives. x squared is equal to 2, and x will be equal to root 2. I'm going to take the positive result only for x, since a negative dimension in the context of this question would not make sense. So I'm going to start off with the nature table method. So I want to prove that this is a maximum, and the stationary point occurred at root 2. So a number approaching root 2 could be 1, a number moving away from root 2 could be 2. They are then subbed into the differentiated function, and I'm going to just look at that up here. So if I start with 1, that would be 4 minus 2 lots of 1 squared. We can see that that has got a result of 2, and that is a positive result. If I then think about subbing in x equals 2, that will be 4 minus 2 lots of 2 squared. That's 4 minus 8, and that's minus 4, and that is a negative result. The reason why I'm subbing in to here is that's the differentiated function, which will give me gradient, and it's gradient that I'm looking to focus on. So I can see then that the slope is as such, and that is a max turn point at x equals root 2. For the double derivative method, I take the differentiated function, differentiate it again. So the constant 4 goes, minus 2x squared becomes minus 4x. Now, if it's a maximum, what I should find is that the double derivative value is negative at x equals root 2. So, minus 4 times root 2, and as expected, that gives me minus 4 root 2. So, double derivative is less than 0. Therefore, max turning point at x equals root 2, and that's the final answer to the question.